What's up guys, so today I'm going to be showing you the new fastest way to make XP as well as money completely solo. So I've been trying to make this video for about two days, but I've been getting lots of matchmaking errors. But, but as of right now, it does seem like that problem seems to be solved as I've been able to find games pretty easily. So anyways, so let's go ahead and check out which skills I have been using and I'll be telling you which ones are relevant and which ones aren't. So as far as relevant skills go, I would recommend using Infiltrator Tier 1 as well as Ace and Tier 2. I also recommend you use Drifter Tier 1 and especially Social Engineering. This is going to be quite helpful as well as Slippery if you're able to do so. If you have your Grifter maxed out, I recommend you use Slippery. I will be showing you two methods to do this. One method we will be benefiting from Slippery, the other method will be benefiting from Social Engineering. So let's go ahead and get right to that into the gameplay and we'll talk from there. So what we'll want to queue up here is for Rock the Cradle. We want to set up to invite only and we'll want to be playing on Overkill difficulty. The Overkill difficulty is going to be rewarding us with a lot more extra XP as well as a lot more money. We'll be making nearly $400,000 per run in about 3 minutes which uh, averages out to a little bit over $100,000 per minute which makes this by far the fastest solo method to make money and by far the fastest method to level up your skills and weapon XP as well. Alright, so once again, I will be showing you two different methods to do this. The one we'll be particularly using for our playthrough and a different alternative route you can take. Uh, we'll start off with the alternative route. Um, what you'll want to do is you'll want to run here to the right after touching a civilian. The reason why you want to touch a civilian is to trigger a rush there. As you can see there at the bottom, my rush is triggered and now we can lockpick this and want to go. So what we want to do after we spawn, we sprint, hit that civilian, come over here, unlock this, and we're going to want to run across these hallways right here. Um, th these cameras will not detect us when we sprint across, so you can just go ahead and sprint across. Uh, it's not a problem. All right, so this is where social engineering comes to play. If we don't have social engineering, this woman right here will snitch on us and we don't want that to happen. All right, so doing it again, we're gonna sprint into the civilian, trigger rush, run over here, juggle pick this door, boom, we're through. We can sprint across this entire hallway. None of the cameras will detect us, boom. Now we want to run out and bait these two security guards right here. As you can see, they heard something and now they're moving. So as they're moving, you come around, get his key card and open the door and we're into this part of the map. Now I'm going to stop here because now I'm going to talk about the second method to get to this point. And then the rest of the map is the same for both methods. So let me go ahead and restart. Now the second method and my personal favorite is we'll just want to run right into these guys and jiggle pick right in front of them. You wait a second, run past them. Now we run all the way to the bouncers and we want to get detected. It's not gonna be much of a choice. We get detected here, get his key, scan the door, and now we wait to be arrested. This guy's gonna arrest me while I have rush. I uncuff in one go and boom, I'm behind the door and I'm now in this position. So this method is a lot faster to get to this point. However, the cops are now searching for us actively, which might make this run a little bit harder. But in my opinion, once you kind of get used to doing this, then it really doesn't matter. They're easily avoidable altogether. Regardless, whichever way you got to this point, we're now here. So what I usually do is I run down the stairs, run down these stairs. We take a right, open this door, mask up if you haven't yet shoot out this vent come out we can sprint across over here all the way onto this balcony jump up get in here sprint across again break this vent and now what we want to do is we want to look for the whiteboard that's going to be showing us the switch to turn off the power now as far as that whiteboard goes there are three possible locations in which it can be located First location is in that room right there, the room we were just at. 
the other location that it can be at is right over there where the question mark currently is and the third and in my opinion the hardest variant of this map is when the crypto and the whiteboard are located all the way back there but we'll go here break this vent we kind of run through here careful with the cop boom run, run and slide across down here bam break the vent look at the cold so that's the switch that we'll want to turn off right there is the a400 white so after we get this bit of information what we want to do is we want to backtrack same pathing boom careful with the camera boom we're up here come back all the way across And the code we got is the A400 white. So we'll want to do that. We want to turn off the white switch on the A400. Now, once again, we run across to that balcony. And here we are. We interact with the computer. We wait for the computer to load. After it's done loading, we interact with it, and now we can go loot the crypto. Usually, I'll tell you the truth, I like to just jump out of this balcony. Now, as far as this timing has gone, uh, of course, they are in the wrong position as we're doing this much slower. But usually, I like to just jump out of this balcony. But if you want to go safer, you can go down the stairs the same way we came up. But I usually jump out of this balcony, run over here, run through this vent, grab the crypto, we gotta turn in over there. So we come over here through the bar, come down here, and we want to throw the bag over that wall. After we throw it over the wall, now we want to come back over there to that green point. So as far as I have found, there are two ways in which I usually do this. The first way that I personally enjoy prefer doing is just going back and safely getting to that point which will usually add several seconds and another way you can just get there is honestly just balls deep run across all the way onto that point so let me show you how that kind of looks like cop boom we just sprint across now this is very risky because it might be it might trigger the alarm before we're able to finish but let's find out if this is gonna go through it still went through anyways because it hit zero seconds. So those are the two ways I found to come across. As you can see, we did it in two minutes and 32. That's because I restarted there. You guys didn't see because I cut the video, but I got caught there at one point when I was trying to do the run across. But yeah, the run across is much more dangerous, but as you can see, it is much faster. I did it in two minutes and a half, but without knowing the code and without running across the pedestrians, or rather the civilians, it's going to take a little while longer. Personally, I prefer to play it safe and go back uh, the long way and make sure we win this safely rather than just running across the civilians. But anyways, let's go ahead and play this map at full speed just so you guys can get the idea of how it looks like when you're going at full speed. Let's go to it. Right there! 
Let me 